Hi, welcome to Avocet Math. In this video, we're going to look at the fundamental theorem of arithmetic and prime decomposition, an important cornerstone in number theory and solving some AMC integer problems. Now, you probably came across this topic in middle school, and uh, there are several equivalent ways of stating this theorem. And one way is as follows. The factorization of positive integers into prime numbers with exponents, p to the a, q to the b, r to the c, is unique apart from the order of factors. Now in this expression, the p, the q, and the r are prime numbers, however many are needed, and the a and the b and the c are positive integer exponents. So what does this mean? Now I like to think in terms of examples. So imagine I give the number 60 to a student and ask her to decompo decompose it into uh, prime factors. So perhaps uh, she likes to pull out all factors of 2 first, and then factor what's left to find that the uh, prime decomposition for 60 is 2 squared times 3 times 5. Now, let's say I give the number 60 to somebody else, and they go ahead and first try to pull out any factor of 10 wherever possible. So in this case, 6 times 10, and then factor the 6 and the 10, and rearrange a little bit. And uh, by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, we know that no matter what order this factorization is done, the resulting prime number decomposition will always be the same. The result is unique to the number we start with. So now, is this result obvious? Well, perhaps. Is this result useless? Definitely not. Uh, in fact, this theorem is probably the single most used theorem in all of number theory, and it comes up in all kinds of ways in such topics as cryptography and logic and uh, rational numbers and the like. So let's look at another example. Let's, uh, again, take our number 60, and suppose that we are working a uh, integer equation problem, and we've come across that 60 is equal to some integer math expression. Doesn't really matter what it is at this point. So what can we learn about this integer math expression just using the fundamental theorem of arithmetic? So here's some questions we could ask. Is the integer math expression divisible by 2? Well, 60 has a factor of 2, so we know that, in fact, it is divisible by 2. Is the integer math expression divisible by 4? Well, it has uh, a factor of 2 squared. In fact, it does have a factor of 4. Is the integer math expression divisible by 8? Well, it has a factor of 2, but only two of them. And so, no, it is not divisible by 8. Is it divisible by 3? Well, it does have a factor of 3, so it is divisible by 3. Is it divisible by 9? Well, it has one and only one factor of 3, so it is not divisible by 9. Is it divisible by 5? Yes, it has a factor of 5. Is it divisible by 7? Well, there is no factor of 7 in the decomposition of 60, so it is not divisible by 7. Is it divisible by 11? No, it is not. And you can continue this list as far as you need to. So what we have here is a list of important facts about this integer math expression because it is equal to an integer, and all integers have one unique prime decomposition. So let's look at one last example. Let's take a look at the general number m, which again, by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, we know has a prime factorization, p to the a, q to the b, r to the c, however many are necessary. And let's take a look at the form of m squared. So let's take this expression and square it and bring the exponent of 2 down into the individual exponents of the prime numbers. And we find that m squared is equal to p to the 2a, q to the 2b, r to the 2c, and so on. So what we know now is that a square number has all even exponents in its prime decomposition. 
And uh, conversely, if we have a prime decomposition which has all even numbers in the exponents, we know that that's a perfect square. So that's an important observation to make. And we can take this one step further. We can take a look at what the form of m cubed is. Again, we can take p to the a, q to the b, r to the c, bring it to the third power, and bring that third exponent down into the individual factors. And when we find that m cubed is equal to p to the 3a, q to the 3b, r to the 3c, and again, however many prime number factors are necessary. So here we now see that a cube, by necessity, has to have exponents that are all multiples of 3. And conversely, if a number has a prime factorization with exponents that are all multiples of 3, we know that that's a perfect cube. So let's see how we might be able to use that. Let's suppose we come across a number n, and we know n is equal to 6 times some perfect square, say m squared. Well, the 6 we can break into its uh, prime decomposition, 2 times 3 times m squared. So what do we know about n? What kind of questions can we ask? So can n, uh, can it be a perfect square? Well, let's take a look. We know that m squared has all even exponents, and we know that we have some odd exponents out in front of it. So no matter what's actually in m, when we finally take these odd exponents and bring them inside along with m squared, we know that we're going to have some prime factors that will have odd exponents. And because they have odd exponents, we know that it cannot be a square. Can it be a cube? Well, let's take a look at that now. So we have m squared, which again we know has even exponents in all its prime factors, and we have some odd exponents hanging out in front of it. So it is, fact it is possible for the odd exponents of 2 and 3 to come into m squared to create prime factor exponents which are multiples of 3. So in fact, it can be a cube. And this is the types of questions you can ask about these uh, integer expressions that you really just can't do with uh, real number expressions or any non-integer expressions. So in summary, we see this is a very powerful technique. And with that, please take a look at the example videos attached to this video, along with the example problem set in the description section. I'll also include a link to some applications of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic in number theory, cryptography, and logic. So uh, check that out, and good luck with all that, and I'll see you with the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.